welcome to Maggie 3 at Build Real World. This is the ne second part of the Necromunda build for the Slum Stack. I have to say that very carefully because there are too many words with S's in it. Um, this is so this is the second part of the video. Um, actually, I've recording this, but I've already done a load of the build, but I'm still building. So um, we're now on to the detail. We're putting all the uh, different shanty slum shanty shacks onto the sump stack, the heat sink stack, the Dyson vacuum cleaner component. Uh, it's coming on pretty pleased with it actually, to be quite honest. Um, this video then is going to be the detailing of the main tower and then assembly, putting everything together on the board, um, working out where it all goes, which is going to be um, uh, not attached until I've painted them. Uh, and which bits can go on and actually make up part of the actual main board to start off with. So there's uh, a lot to go, this is quite a complicated build, certainly more complicated than the first four scenery tiles in this series, um, but I'm having a lot of fun with it, loads of ideas are coming out, so I'm going to carry on digging through the cack and uh, building and see where it takes us basically. Uh, come and check it out, it's over here, I'm really pleased. Okay, so now thinking about other slum shanty shacks to go on the side of my heat sink here. There's the one underneath the walkway uh, with ubiquitous saw lock still modelling it. Quite pleased with that. Rough floor, barricade wall I can take out. That's alright, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to use up bits. I'm going to have to buy some new, more Zoma Tiles stuff at some point, but in the meantime, I'm trying to use up a few things. So that's right. two walls, floor sections. Well, I'm thinking of mounting on the side there, and then I'm going to build up some kind of wally bits and some probably a tarp roof, I think. God knows how I'm going to attach that to the Dyson, because uh, I can't imagine for one minute the plastic that the Dyson's made of is going to be very um, up for sticking things to. I might have to drill into it cut into it uh, which will probably do it so make some more girders and um, see where we go from there really um, and then fill in the kind of floor gaps around each side I like the idea of having this hatch there so they get into this one there and then I think yeah tarpaulin roof and bits and pieces are going to be the best bit um, so um, let's see what happens well, well I think this is kind of working I've got a that's just balanced on there in a minute look I've, I've made one pair of one sprue girder here and I've stuck another one in here which I'm going to also support down from that main part. I mean uh, at the moment I'm just in a position to be able to balance that platform on the side. I'm going to use some uh, mesh or, or something else to kind of fill in the floor gap here a little. Um, and then I need to find something to build up the sides a little bit uh, before I put some kind of covering over the top. So I might use some more of this, some more of this this uh, metal plate. That might do the job, cut into bits. Uh, but yeah, that's that's. I think that's going to work. I think. By Jove, I think that might just work. Okay, this is my uh, progress on my first shanty shack on the side of the heat sink tower uh, quite pleased with this got a way to go with it yeah it needs a roof this bloody great big open gap here I think I'm actually going to put some kind of steps down to another thing but uh, ubiquitous all lock is uh, modelling that quite nicely so scale wise size wise it's not bad these things for underhive scum I can't like seeing and the people who live on the underhive they're all pretty small Crowded, shacky little things. Um, I'm quite pleased with my girders that are kind of holding it up. They look pretty flimsy. Um, but then, you know, it's all homemade stuff. These people have got bits of metal bar that they've been out of work and, and stick on. I've got uh, the hatch that comes up into the... Up into this shack. He's actually got a surround around it, which is an old school... It's an old school orc war truck, war wagon, front wheel. But it's been hollowed out, which is quite cool. 
So I think I'm going to have a ladder kind of dangling out of that. <coughs> uh, needs a tarpaulin roof, I think, which will look pretty neat. Okay, some of this build has already been built to the end of Battlestar Galactica. Yay! BSG has served me well for a number of scenery builds, but now I'm going back to one of my old favourites. And for the next load of builders that I do for Necromunda and probably Lord of the Rings, I'm going to be working my way through Jeremy Brett as Sherlock Holmes. The ultimate Sherlock Holmes, in my opinion. We're going to be watching The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. We're going to be watching The Return of Sherlock Holmes. And then there are the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes to come as well in a different box set. That's a hell of a lot of build time. And we're starting with... Uh, the classic, a uh, scandal in Bohemia. So uh, I'm going to get a bit all geeky and Victorian on you while I'm building this model. Remember, um, so this is the first shack though, on the stack itself. Um, I'm about to add. Here we go. Actually, let's try that in there. Using one of the elevator panels, I'm just dropping that back in there. So there's a back wall up against the shack there. So I'm going to have to arrange some kind of roofing system for this particular shack. I think I'm going to use the odd bit of sprue. Um, I'm going to make and I'm going to hang some uh, tarpaulin over it, which I'll probably make from paper and PVA glue to shape it one way or another. Then I'm going to add another um, slum dwelling around here. I'm going to use uh, this piece of flooring from one of the uh, 40k scenery pieces, and that's going to go, I think, up here. So I'm going to give me a dwelling on a different level I'm going to use some barricades or wall sections or whatever to build around that and this is going to be quite a spacious pad compared to others um, although I might only have this back end of it and have an open part so there's a platform out, open outside so that's my next plan that's the next structure going to go on there um, I think I'm going to have an open air bit with a railing there and then I'm going to make railings side walls uh, two of these railings i'm going to cut them down so they fit across there and then i'm going to have some barricade stuff the back end to make some high walls and then i'm going to have some girders standing up to make some height give some height and then we'll have some either some metal roof or again tarpaulin we'll have to see what we can work out it needs to be removable though so i can get figures inside it so uh, i'm going to cut first of all the ends off these two bits here so they'll go together um, we'll see how we go with that. I'll probably have the ends off those as well. Ends off first of all. Stick them on. Work out that how, how that works. So, all right, so a bit of a dry fit at the minute. Uh, this handrail that's fine. Cut off the ends of those two so they fit on quite nicely there. I think oh, that's not about fucking thing. I'm going to go. I think with this L-shaped barricade there. The barricades are really cool. Um, I'm going to get some more though, so I can actually turn them into kind of scatter terrain. But they're making really good wall sections here. And I'm going to have this one, I'm going to trim down and stick on the end there like that. And then I need some kind of way at this end of blocking off and making some kind of door. And we'll have to see. There's another bit of cut down barricade that might work quite well over here. Delineating what is shack and then what is kind of outside public walkway area. Well, that's not bad. And then, like I said, a couple of kind of sprue type girders, giving it a bit of extra height. And we'll have some tarpaulin on that. I wonder what that will look like when it's painted. It'll be quite cool, I think. Um, so next job then is to cut off the, the supports on the back of the barricades. I don't need those. They're gonna stick flush to the, the, uh, the walkway somehow. And then I've got to figure out a way of mounting this on the vacuum cleaner pot, although that was set up quite nicely, I think I'm probably going to use uh, some Promethean tube pipe underneath to give it some support to hold it up. That might work. We'll have to see. Okay, so I've got these two bits of barricade, which are now going to stick together. Uh, I've trimmed off the supports, trimmed off this side here so it's flush. I'm going to get the wheel, the plastic cement, stick those together like that. Then they are going to stick on the end like this. I think it's going to give me a bit of that end of my house kind of thing. Yeah, right. Dry fit, whatever. <laughs> oh, well, that's sticking on there now. Um, 
Well, I've got those. It's all still very Necromunda bits and 40k bits. So what I want to do now is find. Now I've got some rough structure. And now I want to find some other plates and cack that I could stick on the sides here to make it look a bit more shanty. Because um, at the minute it's very, very neat. I want it to look more random and chucked together. So uh, see what else I can find. Hey, guess what time it is, people? Yet again, it's time to go digging through the cack. I wonder how many times I can get that into one video. One video. Oh, you never know. Right, let's get back into the cack boxes. Here we go. So what we're looking for is random bits of cack that we can stick on. I really don't even know if I'm going to find any in here, to be honest. I might have to go back to the big box. Oh, little things like that, actually. Rivet plates off all war wagons from the 1980s. They'll, they'll go quite cool. I'm not going to bore you with all of this now, but come back and see what we can find. So I'm now making good use of more bits of sprue. Look, this is cool. This cross in the middle. I've used a couple of those already. So uh, I can't remember what was on this. I think it's Promethean pipe stuff. But I'm going to use that as roof on top of there. And then that way there, that will support a tarpaulin over the rest of this model. And uh, most of that shack then will be close to being done, which is pretty cool. Then I've got to stick it to my tower. Right, now I don't know if what I'm about to do is going to be considered in some corners like committing absolute sacrilege. But... If there are any old school people watching my channel, you might remember these. If you're a whippersnapper and you don't remember Necromunda first time round, or I can't remember what edition of 40k it was, or or even, even Gorkamork and other things, you might not recognise this high quality piece of Games Workshop plastic, which was known when I worked for Workshop uh, romantically as a pointy stick. Um, these were weapons. Produced in uh, large numbers, uh, are available in Games Workshop box games, and they were used for uh, uh, measuring because they do have kind of measures on them in inches. Oh, that's upside down. Look, just about visible. Eight, nine, ten, that kind of thing, up to uh, eighteen. But they were also used for poking your opponent viciously in the face uh, whilst playing games. They were pretty good because they were used for kind of like working out line of sight and things. But bent as hell. I am about to cut this up and make this into girders to suspend a roof on this here shack. Um, so if there's any old school players out here who think this is a crime against plastic, oh, I apologise. To anybody who's kind of new to the hobby, you wouldn't have a clue what I'm talking about anyway. And frankly, uh, you know, anybody, old school, new school, go over yourself. It's just a bit of convenient plastic. So here we go. It's going to have numbers on it. This is going to suspend the roof on my shack. That's going up on the tower above this shack over here. <laughs> right, so I'm sticking on some fabric now uh, onto the top of the uh, this first shack. Um, super gluing that on. It's just actually it's all linen, it's a linen scrap. Super gluing that there and there, and then in a minute I'm going to coat the whole thing in Mod Podge which will soak the sides, fold them over the edges like that. And that's going to give me, should give me a covering on that. And then I'm going to do the same up here on my top structure as well. And then I'm not quite sure where we're going to go from there. <coughs> I need to stick the heat tower to the Wallace and Grobbit perfect cup of base over there. And then have a clear up and then kind of like think about where I am from a, a build stage. Because I dug pretty well. Might hang some fabric curtains or tops on, on the uh, um, under hive, under walkway home over there as well. You never know. We'll give it a go, see what we can do. All right, new pop mod pod. Going to start making my top then. Stuck on the linen, gonna soak it in glue and let it hang. See what we can come up with up there and there. So, what I love sometimes with this kind of modeling is trying to figure out stuff, even the silly little narrative. Here is this little shack on the side of the heat stack, right? And I, I, I filled in this back 
section over here. All right. There you go. I filled that in and I filled in over there. And there was no way in apart from I've made this kind of hatch at the bottom. You can see there's a hatch there. So I was like, right, I'll have a ladder sticking out of that. And then it's like, well, how the hell do you get to the ladder? So now I'm using another ladder that's been supported by girders that's going to kind of go across there. So where's your ubiquitous, ubiquitous oar lock? If you want to clear out this shack. Oh, cool stuff being stuck together. If you want to get into this shack. You're going to have to risk life and limb on this very precarious walkway to get underneath that ladder and climb up inside it. I really like that. Well, God knows how you're going to get up to this top one. Maybe a ladder around the other side. And here we have another brilliant example of serendipity when digging through the cack. This is a plastic sink strainer thing. Put that down the plug hole, stop gunk going down there. And it also fits perfectly in the top of my slum stack. How cool is that? That's gonna stick in there. That finishes that off nicely. Mwah. <laughs> All right, so this is the uh, next shack level going in. Um, I've stuck this one floor with super glue to the edge of the heat stack. I'm now sticking, supporting that there. A second floor piece with another hatch. And that's going to have a ladder. You can see that there. That will go just hanging off, just off the edge of the walkway from the uh, under walkway house. This then, I've got this front section of a Goliath. It's going to make one wall, it's going to go over here. And I'm going to put some more walls across there and that's going to need more roof too. This is uh, done quite well now. My tarpaulins are all completely dry. That's actual linen with soaks in Mod Podge. One there, one there. This will probably end up with something similar. The next thing I'm thinking about is covering this very, very obvious Dyson kind of like mechanism. Um, all I've done so far is cut out this piece of me metal mesh which is going to sit over the top and that will just disguise the whole thing and then it's almost certainly going to end up with one of these in front of it that'll hide the mesh that'll hide the cack behind actually deconstructing the dice and things very tricky um and now i could probably do something over the push button bit too but we're really really coming on with the actual tower i'm gonna to have to start considering sticking some of this all down at the base now i'm gonna have to work out where it goes and texturing the base i think is gonna be quite important as well so um there's still quite a lot to do this video definitely this model is definitely becoming a probably a three-part because by the time i've got all the construction done painting it and all the details is going to be kind of like the last part i still haven't worked out how i'm going to light it i think i'm going to have to go with finding somewhere to put a garland light battery holder um, and then have a string of lights going across it which will look quite cool um, wires and lights and bits and pieces oh I've added that this is now stuck to the top of the heat sink which is that plastic uh, plug strainer so now we're all looking pretty neat the Mod Podge is only supporting that plastic platform. That one is not part of the model. So, we are looking for bits to make this last shack on the side of the heat stack. I kind of need walls and more floor bits. So, it's time to go digging through the cack. There's a little box of cack down there. Look, this evening there's a kind of biggish box of cack here. Uh, what have we got there? Uh, that's an enormous box of cack here. I could really do with clearing up that actually <laughs> in this workshop, but you know, hey, -ho. oh, there's a little one there too. Look, look, get that cack rag out of the way. Digging through the cack is ongoing. Nothing there though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see what we can come up with. There is. 
an entire land speeder. Um, I don't know how I'm going to use that, but oh, it's got to be used for something, isn't it, really? God, I hate space marines. <sighs> uh, that's the ladder stuck in underneath this shack. It's ubiquitous Orlock. Say hi. Yay! Uh, that's the ladder going up inside. Go on, focus, you bastard. And uh, now what I've done here is I've basically I've stuck this ladder down onto the gutters. Found myself a metal plate, which is one of the ones cut out of a munitorium crate. That now is actually underneath that ladder there. Now we're pretty much at the point where the tower itself I'm really quite pleased with. Shack, shack, shack here and he's finishing off. You can see now I've added, uh, this has also got a ladder that goes up to this shack here. Through a hatch. I've added an extra bit of floor to the walkway um, over where we've got the under walkway shack. So there are now four different kind of dwellings on this model. It's pretty cool. I reckon we're, we're pretty much there now. So what I really need to do is yeah, stick the whole, start sticking it together, assembling it, putting it on the on the base. I think almost certainly I'm going to have to paint the sump tower, the heat sink tower thing separately because I'm never going to get a brush in there. It's going to be way too complicated to get in here and do anything much with that. So it'd be much better if I paint that separately. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to draw, decide exactly where it's going to go on the base and I'm going to draw on with Sharpie so I can outline that and then I can work out where everything else is, is going to stick because I definitely need to stick some things down to the base to get on with this. Um, what I really think I need to do now actually is work, there's still a big gap here, which isn't too bad, I could have a big gap. Um, but on the other hand, I mean, this, this needs an end wall section, and a bit there, and I have, do want to add this ladder that I had worked around with earlier. He says, dropping it on the floor. Um, either just hanging down, or maybe coming down an angle from one shack to another, maybe. See what we can come up with. Floor still needs a texture. But yeah, we're starting to get a lot of height, a lot of interest. And I've got to find that location still for me lights. Right, this is uh, just a tower update then. So, we've got, starting at the top, metal grid. Shack at the top with tarpaulin roof. Over that covered area there, there's plenty of room in there for people to sort of live. Currently, no way of getting down. Need to do the ladder. Next one down, this shack here, going to have tarpaulin put over that and around the corner a little bit. Going to make it so you can easily still get hands in to place figures in. That's got a hatch and ladder underneath it. And that ladder will come out by on the walkway where the uh, under walkway shack is. Around this side, shack covered in tarpaulin and again another hatch with a ladder coming down it. And this one has got the ladder that runs across to the other walkway on the other side. So this is now kind of like about all the shanty that I'm gonna stick onto this at the moment. Although in a proper kind of favela, a proper shanty town, I reckon there's still room for more. Up around the top maybe, you never know. I might come back to this model and add stuff. I've got to add the metal plate across the bottom and now I've got to stick this on. Um, well, not stick it on, we get to the point where I'm painting. Metal grid covering up all that cack, remember? The, the Dyson stuff. This is a, a, a marvel of super glue and polystyrene cement in places, which I'm really kind of chuffed with. So yeah, from that point of view, this fella is going to stick on here, so you can be able to walk right up to that. Nice bit of 40k kind of solidness there as well. So that's the tower. Let's put on all the other elements and see what they look like, and then we're going to start the base. Okay. Come on, come on. Right, so I'm just thinking lights now. Going to go with a wired system um, I'm using actually the remains of a 
fiery uh, flickering LED as a base and I've got this kind of thing that was a Lego barrel which is going to end up on top of that I'm going to drill a hole take a hole for the top so I can take the wires out of it um, probably and then I'm going to make this so I can lift this up to get to the battery power easier but then I'm going to stick down the battery pack down on the base of the model somewhere possibly on a 40 mil figure base will that fit on there I see that just about fit on there I can start to make some kind of unit that's going to sit live down here on the floor somewhere I'll, um, I'll probably start it down here I'll run a, a, a light up here and then up to there maybe and then either around this way or around the other side so some of that lights up I'll see how that works All right, so I'm still kind of hands-free here, but I think I've, I might have sussed this out. Look, I've got, this is an old 50 millimeter square base. This is my light garland, um, which I'm gonna have, I'm gonna actually stick to that base. Um, the awkward bit is gonna be from a painting point of view, this. Obviously I don't wanna paint any LEDs, but I'm gonna stick, this is gonna stick down there. Then this guy is gonna stick go over the top of it I'm just going to thread that along there and this guess actually going to sit loose uh, this barrel is going to stick to the top of this that then is going to be my very cunning cover to go over my light garland I'll have the lights coming out of the top of that and then that will probably run up the side of the model I'm going to see what that looks like it might look a bit shite at the moment but uh, I'm pretty sure we can make it work especially we're going to 40k up some of this neck and under up some of this with some gubbins on the outside Make it look a bit less obvious as to what it is. Uh, come back, have a look in a moment. All uh, right, so that's my little barrel that's going to have the go over the top of the light garland. I'm going to get this uh, hatch cover, which I'm going to stick on the top there. Going to need to drill a hole in that. So we're going to go and play with the Dremel. Here we go, going to do some Dremel in. Uh, we'll have a quick look. I've got to put this down now because I've can't hands free in a minute, which is no good. So, Mr. Dremel, meet Mr. Hatch Cover. From from from. Necromunda Driller Killer style. Here we go. All right, drilled out. Now that's going to sit on top of this barrel. Now let's come over here, pass the Savlon. That's in case of wounds and emergencies. So that's now going to stick on there, and I'll be able to take the light garland out the top of that. A few more bits of cack from digging through the cack stuck on the outside of that, and I reckon that's going to look all right. So, super gluing my hatch cover onto the piece of Lego. Now, please note, colonial types, the plural of Lego is Lego. There we go, that's going to stick on there. Hole all the way through that now. Yeah, that needs some pipes and gubbins on the outside, but that's going to look all right. All right, this is only mocked up right now, but as you can see, that's going to sit there-ish. Lights coming out, going to go up around some of the balconies. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight LED lights on it, which is pretty cool. I want to have one that kind of like comes up and lights up under here. Right, then run it out, run it out, be quite cool. I think that would be quite a cool solution. The idea being that actually I'll just be able to lift this bit up and get to the on off button. That's going to be stuck down the base. So it will sit there, look quite neat. Uh, but it'll be quite a cool solution for this particular model. Right, so now, where are we at now? Now we're at the point where I want to put more. So I'll pull in roof over this shack this is the third shack on the stack shack on the stack um made from barricade back in munitorium uh door bit off the front of a gene stealer cult goliath rock grinder crunchy thing um girders from sprues so uh, that's that's quite cool, quite like that. The idea of this one being that uh, the ladder here goes up through a hatch. And we're going to have this shack kind of arrangement here. 
it's really kind of tricky here i'm going to have to have canvas hanging down both sides attached to the top here but i want to have enough space over this side and this side to be able to get figures in and out easily so we'll see what we go i'm going to take some more of my um, fabric linen fabric i'm going to cut that roughly drape that over the sides and have that hanging down here and mod podge it just like i've mod podge the other stuff and then um i'm pretty much there i think with the shacks i could possibly have room for another one under here i suppose but what i really want is a ladder down from there onto something would be quite cool um uh, but the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to find some guff to stick on like little little vents things like this one like a tiny little vent there to go on some of these flat surfaces to break them up make them more interesting from a painting point of view um then that this tower then is still completely separate from the base and that's definitely going to stay like that while i paint it because it's a bloody enormous bit of gear anyway so from that point of view that's quite neat spin that right around there say hello to ubiquitous all up and his enforcer cop mate um here's that uh ladder walkway going across there to get into that one there so yeah there's always i suppose the potential to have another shack under here um i'll see how it go i want to have some themes with some of these actually i quite like the idea of having a water reclamation unit god only knows what that would look like though but um yeah i like the I love, really love the ideas of the guilds and the tradesmen in, in their commander and, and water collectors is, is definitely one of them. But they might be closer down to the sump sea, we'll have to see. Right, so let's see what I can do with twist and turn that round. Go for this roof here, tarpaulin. I'm literally taking some linen. I'm just going to cut a piece off. Let's see what it does. Obviously way too much there to start off with. I need to trim that back. I want to have that hanging over the top, although I could just kind of like hoik it up, hang that over, trim off some of these edges. Because I'm going to use these girders here to support over the top. So uh, let's give that a go. Okay, so I think I'm kind of happy with where I want this to go. Look, I'm going to have that top up there and hanging over the top as you pick with the saw lock, just modelling that. But I also fancy having a bed or something actually under here. The problem with these making these models is you can just get totally lost in the amount of stupid detail you can apply. And I think I'm about to be guilty of applying some stupid detail because I could have a little... Either an attic, a little loft area space up here, or a, a, a bed kind of area. Um, serves no purpose at all whatsoever from a game, because I won't be able to get figures in it, but it would just look cool from one angle or another, so I'm going to give that a go. Okay, you know what time it is. We're looking to put random bits of tat on the tower to break up that plastic. So yet again, it's time to go. Wait for it, wait for it. Digging through the cack. Let's see what we can find tonight. Oh, excellent. I'll tell you what. Uh, old plastic Terminator body. Uh, I love these things. Look, look, vents and everything else is going straight on. Can have that. Uh, this, of course, is only one tiny little box, cack box. Uh, recycled. That's a nice hatch. That was on the tank that's been a couple of times. That's going to go on. Um, see what else we can find. Getting that in there. Mm. Odd control panel. Yeah. All sorts of things. Thanks everybody for the nice comments about my various cack boxes. I, uh, you know, it makes me. It, it, I feel justified. Keeping all this cack, a lot of it was in the 80s, 1980s and 90s. I could tell my mother that she was wrong and that I was right and I would find a use for this, this cack one point or another, one day or another. So, you, Mum, I know you're not watching this, but... 
Right, let's get out of the way, see what we can stick on this model. A little bit of ladder, like that. Right. Bit of top over the top of my girders. I've got a little platform in here. There could be a bed. I'm going to stop there. I haven't made any bedding for it. Quick Mod Podge covering on the whole thing. The Mod Podge, oh, dirty brush, look at that. Uh, Mod Podge is going to kind of like seal it and it will make the whole thing go solid. Make it look a bit more tarpy than it currently is. Just soak all that lush PVA in. Um, all over the entire thing. I folded back this bit here. Give it a bit more interesting shape. Profile, that again, when you're adding this stuff, the more interesting things you do to it, the more it is to paint, the better it is to paint. So squishing that down there, hanging that over the edge, folding it around there, that will all be cool. From a painting point of view. Most of this shanty shack then is uncovered with a sleeping section up top covered over stop any dust and cack falling out of the dome above um right that's that right so i started to add a few details into the shacks i've got um an old part of an old boiler unit from a old alt war buggy um so that's in there because i've got a bit of a heater unit there attached the into the the, the stack i've added few more bits of cack lift that up here for a minute down here on the bottom stack there remember that's probably going to have one of those sets of legs in the way there don't need to do much else there um in here seats up the top monitor unit in there and a, a water barrel so just little things give a little bit of extra character, a little bit of extra interest to paint. Um, makes the whole thing that bit more lifted, give it a bit more of a lifting look, which is what I'm trying to go for, of course. Right, this is, uh, I think, the end of part two. Um, I've now got most of the structure done and solid and in place. We've got, I've stuck the walkway down the um furnace over here and the main stack are not they're not stuck on i'm going to stick those on later what haven't i videoed i've filmed around this side i've now added a bunch of uh just cardboard slabs onto the base that's going to give some extra texture there everything's going to get sanded and stoned and rubbled up for next time anyway um i've got my bedroom area and tarpaulin drying off here i've added various things in different places just to give a bit of extra texture to the whole stack ubiquitous saw lock just checking out that platform there looking pretty cool um so i'm really quite pleased with this, this is a really big structure compared to my other uh pieces of terrain it's gonna take a hell of a lot of painting um which is difficult because i always get really impatient and want to get on with making the next thing but um so we're gonna see where we go from there but yeah i'm really 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 pleased with this the the stump the sump stack itself there we go then is It's come on really nicely. Um, well, let's just come out on this. There we go. This is the, the stack all by itself then. So there's we've still got that cool Dyson cylinder shape, but we've got, now got three shacks. One there, two on the top, and one around the other side. There is still room, actually, to hang the odd extra one on there, I think. But I'm going to see how I go with this. I don't want to over-clutter this. Otherwise, it'll get too tricky. So that is going to live on there. I'm going to paint that separately. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Ladders and different access and bits and pieces all around. Um, so that's going to go on. And then I've kind of got 
down here the light system for this model which is going to be um, my garland light stuck to actually a 50 millimeter square base which is going to stick down and this element just covers the whole thing up so that's just going to slide up and down over the light and when everything else is in place he says not being able to get it to go um, I'm going to weave the light strand itself with the LEDs up so there'll be a light underneath uh, the walkway hovel here and then a light or two coming up to some of the other shanty stacks as well and then maybe across there so I'll, I'll weave that around that'd be quite cool so that's the end of part two of the sump stack it's really coming on now the whole model's kind of taken on a life of its own i'm so pleased that uh people chipped in and gave me ideas in the first place and i've had loads of fun actually working out how all of this works i'm gonna have to make some people who live here now of course but um it's really coming on next time then i'm going to finish off details like uh, the hard surfaces rubble and bits and pieces down the bottom and then we're going to prime and paint and get the whole thing finished off and see how it fits alongside the other tiles that i've made so far so if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to my channel um if you haven't already of course you have if you haven't already then subscribe now and then go back and watch all the other necromunda builds and other stuff too there's all sorts of things on there um please do leave comments down below i love engaging with you guys there's so many ideas are coming through i've had some people suggest that i start a, a patreon um i'm not quite sure what i'd do with that to be quite honest i'm just having a lot of fun doing this i suppose you could get outtakes of all the swearing that happens in the actual model making process uh, which might be quite a good laugh um, i'll have a think on that but in the meantime comment subscribe make sure you come back and see us next time and uh, uh, tune into Magrathia Builder Worlds as we go along towards Christmas. Thanks for watching. Cheers.